Log Talk Radio. Hello, and welcome to the Astro Energy Astrology Show on Blog Talk Radio with me, astrologer Shelley Overton. Each week, we go over the planetary positions discuss astrology, and take callers' questions. If you would like to call in and get a reading, you can call 347-994-3365. Call in early as the lines fill up. of the Astro Energy Astrology Show. I am Shelley Overton, and I'm an astrologer in Orlando, Florida. You probably can't hear me at all because my mic was way up. So, hi, welcome to Astro Energy Astrology. My name is Shelley Overton, and it is May 7th. So, there you go, got it all out. Anyway, it's 81 here in Orlando. It's slightly overcast, but it's going to rain a lot today. I don't know if you're getting a lot of this rain this year, this week. <laughs> so many things going on. I am flustered, but that's okay. We'll get it together. Anyway, so lots of stuff going on. We've had a very busy week. We're going to continue to have a very busy week because of Gemini energy. Today, the moon is at 19 Gemini, and Mars is at 24 Gemini, opposite Jupiter at 23 Sagittarius. So, Mars just opposed directly Jupiter yesterday, and while we had the show again, the show is kind of more condensed now, so I was talking about Saturn retrograding last week, and this week I want to talk a little bit about this opposition, because um, it's pretty significant, and I felt it really strongly over the course of the last week, and even though it is now breaking up a bit, we are kind of at a secondary kick from it with the moon exactly where Mars was for the next, I would say, five or six hours. We're going to feel the moon right at that opposition point to Jupiter. And because Mars is still there, it's going to be a pretty rocking and rolling time, honestly. Because um, Gemini, okay, so let's just talk about Mars for a bit. Mars in Gemini is action, drive, self-motivation, self-interest at times, um, how we express our drive out into the world, what it is that we do without necessarily thinking about it. It's just our impulse immediately to do something. And in Gemini, Gemini, okay, so let's back up one second. Mars is a fire energy. Okay, so that means that he likes to torch the path. He, he's dynamic and outgoing and can be forceful and vibrant. He's now driven by an energy associated with a mental energy, which is Gemini. And Gemini is ruled by Mercury. So Mercury is, I don't know if you're familiar with the element of Mercury, but the element of Mercury is like a liquid. It is um, the basis of the word mercurial. It is, cannot be held in your hand and stay still. So it's like, of course, you don't want to put mercury in your hand because, you know, it's toxic. But if you were, you would try and touch it. It would bounce around. It would not stay put. It would move around in your hand. And so having Mars enabled by that energy, you are going to find things that are inconsistent. And Mercury is the ruler, uh, is the messenger god. So he's the ruler of communication and um, expression. So having Mars in that realm means that we are going to be more forceful with our words. We're going to jump around and say this and say that and not necessarily be able to back it up. Um, if we do back it up, we may do things that are contrary, contradictory, 
or duplicitous because remember it's the duality of the sign of the twins so this energy is um unexpected unexplainable and um can be difficult to deal with at times but it can also be very charismatic and it is a kind of energy that does get people uh riled up and can the, the mars energy the fire um Oh, what I'm trying to say here, the expression in a physical, forceful way, coupled with the mental energy of Gemini, means that we are going to see kind of a war of words because the opposite side of the Earth has Jupiter at it. And so the other side of the Earth, Sagittarius is there, and that's where Jupiter, its ruler, is right now, going retrograde, going backwards over where we've already been, so anything that happened in the last couple months, with the exception of the last week and a half, two weeks, that's when Jupiter retrograded. We are going to actually, I should look it up specifically, but I'm going to just, you know, rough it <laughs> for now. So for a little bit, we've seen Jupiter retrograde. I can look at my um, ephemeris. And for the newbies, an ephemeris is a chart table of all the planetary positions in which signs they're in, et cetera, et cetera. So um, let's just lo go back here and see. Okay, so he retrograded April 11th. So, yeah, it's been about a little less than a month, so a little over three weeks. And so we have this energy at odds with each other. So Jupiter, also a very dynamic energy. Um, I know a lot of you have probably heard this repetitively, and I apologize for that. Those who have listened to me a long time, but I'm always picking up new listeners, so I want to kind of get everyone on board. But um, I know how frustrating it can be to listen to someone in a podcast who repeats a lot. But first off, repetition will get you to remember what I'm telling you, and it also helps the new people. So I apologize, but that's just kind of the nature of podcasting as you're teaching things. So Jupiter is in an enormous planet. It is a thousand times the size of Earth, which, if you can even conceive of that, is obviously enormous. So it has tremendous magnetic pull or energetic pull on us. And currently, he's retrograde. So I'm going to explain that just a little bit, too, because I want you to understand that we are in a solar system, and all the planets are going around the sun. But from the Earth's perspective... As the planets go around, there's a period where if you can imagine the orb around the sun, and we're looking at that orb from our perspective, and the planets go around, there's like a slice of energy so where it appears to be going forward, and then it goes to the other part of its orb around the sun, and now it appears to be going backwards. That is the retrograde motion. So retrograde means we're going to go back over those issues. So you see this in politics, and I'm sorry if it upsets some people. It upsets me too, but it is a wonderful thing to use as an illustration for astrology because it is the universal social, social view of how the planets affect people. So I'm just going to go real quick here over to um, Donald Trump's chart because Donald Trump is a Gemini. And so this is very strongly affecting his chart. And I'm just going to call that up because it is going to very much, well, it already is. If you read the news, he is scrambling to block everything that Congress is trying to do to him and get information. And he's blocking it all basically. So, He's born June 14th, um, 1946, in Jamaica, New York, at 10.54 a.m. So if you're following along where you are, that's what his information is. So he has a sun at 22 Gemini, north node at 20 Gemini, and a 17-degree Uranus in Gemini. So today the moon is on his Uranus which can be erratic, especially Uranus in Gemini, you have a double dose of this air energy. So it's kind of all over the place, but it is electrical. It is like lightning. He definitely is like lightning in a bottle. And he's a communicator. That's part of his life purpose. So he came in 
under Gemini, he has Uranus, which is electrical transmission, technology, the Internet. It's no wonder he is a Twitter president. Because he has Uranus and Gemini in his house of communicate, well, excuse me, in his house of uh, career, but it rules communications and it rules the internet. That's how he gets his word out. So Mars is triggering all this right now, and it just went over his sun. He has Jupiter on his natal moon, or was, excuse me, was I guess his natal moon. Well, it's only two degrees off, so 21 degrees and 12 minutes, and Jupiter is right on that, going retrograde. So it's going back over that energy, the energy of how he integrates with women, how he integrates with uh, mothers and the mothering energy, the nurturing energy. And something I've said, I don't know if I've said it a lot on air, but his chart is very strong for being taken. Well, I shouldn't say that. What should I say? <laughs> I don't want to be inflammatory, but it's kind of hard not to when you're talking about Trump. Um his chart is going through stress around relationships to women. He's got Neptune in his house of marriage. He's And so everything that's going on right now with Jupiter opposite Gemini, Mars, and Moon is squaring Neptune in his house of marriage. There's an idealization there. And when Neptune goes retrograde, things become more clear in his house of marriage. So that's a very strong connection to women. He's got Jupiter in his house of home and family which is ruled by cancer and the sign of women or uh, mothers naturally. And he has the moon in there, which is mom. Mom is opposite the sun in his chart. So the sun is dad and Uranus rules personal power. So there's this strong dynamic around personal power. And then he's got Venus at the end degrees of his house of networking around uh, friends and, and coworkers and anyone who's associated with networking for career. So Jupiter, over the course of this next year, will be opposing all of his cancer. Currently, Saturn and Pluto are opposing Venus and Saturn in cancer for him. And the conjunction of Saturn to Pluto next January is going to fall almost exactly dead opposite his natal Saturn and within a couple degrees of his natal Venus. So women are a big thing in his world right now. And I would say definitely Nancy Pelosi is the personification of a lot of that. Probably Theresa May is included in some of that, and honestly, every other woman in his life, including his daughter and his wife, and um, reporters and women he's had dealings with, good and bad, um, they're all part of the dynamic of really what's going on in his world. And yes, there is a lot of stuff with men and legalities. He's got Gemini energy, which is male energy in his chart that's all his career as gemini makes him dualistic but it's also the very masculine expression and soon mars is going into cancer which will be another house for him it goes out of his house of career into the people surrounding him in his career and cancer's the women cancer's the mom so it's more about how he is going to well i have to tell you it's not even not even only about the women but Cancer is the sign of our country. We have a Cancer Sun, for July 4th, 1776. So uh, the Mercury, the Saturn, the Venus are all in his house of soul group and people who are here to support his vision of what he does. So as Mars goes into that house, there is also going to be the opposition to Jupiter. Um, actually, the, the exact opposition is right now, but Jupiter will be moving in opposing his Saturn. It will not be opposing Mars until next year again, or maybe even actually two years from now. I'm sorry, Mars has a two-year, two-and-a-half-year cycle. So it goes all the way through the zodiac and comes back around in a little over two years. So two years from now, a huge different story going on there. But currently, Mars is about to hit his Cancer, and it is going to oppose Saturn and Pluto after it opposes Jupiter. Anyway, I don't want to talk about that anymore. I'm sorry if I'm a little bit intense today. Um, the Mars in Gemini and the Moon in Gemini squares a lot of my chart. And so it's kind of um, energizing the Gemini aspect of my chart and at odds with my own natal Mercury. So anyway, what I want to say mostly about the Mars opposite Jupiter is it is about teachers. It's about 
a little bit of power struggle with the Mars, which of course rules men. Jupiter is about freedom. There is an interesting dynamic. Michael Cohen went into um, jail this week on the Mars opposite Jupiter. He hinted that more information will come out. Jupiter likes to express and Gemini likes to express. So Jupiter will tell it like it is in their mind and Mars and Gemini will be rather blunt themselves. So you're going to have a lot of information coming out um, in the next couple of weeks. And let's see what else happens here. Cancer. Mars goes into Cancer on the 17th by my table here. I don't have my ephemeris open. Let me just real quick check that for you. As we flip past Cinco de Mayo. And let's see. It said the 17th, but I'm going to get it exact here. Sorry. Um, it's actually the 15th at 11.09 p.m. So Mars and Cancer, 11.09 p.m. Wednesday, which is next Wednesday. And that will create a big shift. It is an aggressive energy for America. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if some kind of war uh, conversation or even awareness of something escalating. I know that currently there's a lot of escalation, aggressive escalation on multiple fronts. So keep an eye on that. But the Jupiter-Mars opposition, one thing that did strike me this past week was the plane crash in Jacksonville. It went off the end of the runway, and I believe there was also another one in Moscow. Because this energy – oh, and then the, the last news story was the Kentucky Derby. Because um, I was looking at the Kentucky Derby, I usually break down what goes on, but I didn't this time. And I did look at the chart right before the post time, and Mars opposite Jupiter was almost exact at that point. So I was looking at it going, yeah, something's going to happen with two horses. Definitely, I was thinking it would probably be more like a photo finish, but there was definitely um, a conflict going on because Jupiter rules horses, Mars is action and races, and duality of Jupiter. So that exact aspect in the sky would affect the outcome. And sure enough, it was contended that the winner who won by one and three quarters lengths was disqualified because he knocked the legs of another horse and they went with the, the rules and they disqualified him. So the second who came in, who was a very long shot, like 65 to one, ended up winning the race 15 minutes after the race was over. That's a very long delay. But that's also this opposition. And Mars is running uh, out beyond the sun. He is out of bounds. And actually, let me see what else is going on here. I just want to take a quick look. And then that day also, I have to tell you, Moon had just passed the sun. And so the Moon was also kind of running on his own as well and creating an outcome that would not be traditional. So note to self, always look at the uh, events before they get out there so you can tell it like it is. Anyway, okay, so let's see. We've got a lot of people waiting to talk to me today, and so I'm going to get to our callers real quick here. I'm just going to click off a couple windows and a couple cards and – call up my astro energy chart here and my computer of course that's another thing that's a real quick I want to tell you this energy because Gemini is ruled by Mercury can be very similar to a Mercury retrograde so if you're having difficulty with your technology your computers and your phones know that that's a thing and also accidents I've been hearing an awful lot of emergency vehicles which is the Mars connection and Mercury is accidents Mars is emergency energy so just know please just slow down take a little extra time in your cross town trips or your out of town trips going to the airport you're going to want to add more time today probably more specifically there's a lot of that energy still like I said with the moon probably for the next few hours after the moon gets past Mars it will start to wane a little bit more but um, Mercury just went into Taurus He's at one degree Taurus, so now we're thinking more about the materiality of life, the tangible goods, um, how things are going to play out that way. Venus at 20 Aries, uh, Venus at 20 Aries, and she is squaring Saturn right now. 
and of course Pluto in the next few days because she does about a degree a day. So in the next couple days, she'll be exactly square to Pluto. So uh, women issues, again, women, assertive women, um, squaring the status quo. Saturn is retrograde. Pluto is retrograde. They're going back towards the past. They don't want to change. Wherever Capricorn is in your chart, you're digging your feet in. You're saying, no, I'm not ready to go. I want to go back to the past and rediscover something. But you are going to change. It's going to happen. It's coming. And it will be over the course of this year. But later on in the late summer and fall, when both planets go direct, we're heading towards that Saturn-Pluto direct conjunction in January of next year, and it will culminate. So I guess in a way, this is a little bit of a breather. There is an inconjunct of Moon to Mars right now, so that's 150 degrees. And a quincunx is the technical term, not one of my favorites, so I just use inconjunct, which is roughly the same amount of degrees if you're going the the small aspect in a chart, so um, 30 degrees apart is an inconjunct, or if you look at a chart when you go the long way around, 150 degrees, that's the same kind of energy in my humble opinion. It is an uncomfortable separation where there are very little things in common, and So that inconjunct is between the moon Mars and Saturn Pluto today. So that is also another very significant energy around um, action, awareness of truth, which definitely Mars moon can make us more inclined to not tell the truth. The moon is wanting to nurture the psyche and information is coming through from all directions, definitely with Gemini and the Mercury energy, and it's being acted on quickly and not necessarily without pro- or with processing. So having that um, authoritarian energy of Saturn-Pluto retrograde conjunct, you're going to find a lot of uh, powerful standoffs coming with that. And then, of course, like I said, the opposition between Jupiter and Mars-Moon. So Mars and Moon are really... I want to say they're kind of renegade right now, and so they're running together. The moon is how we look at our home life, how we look at the homeland on a larger scale, and then Mars is taking action around it. Jupiter is foreign affairs, so there could be also some energy around foreign interactions, and there are a lot of blustering, you know, chest-beating stories in the news about wars and contention right now and it's ramping up it's not surprising mars is at the central point of both the inconjuncts and the oppositions and the moon is really infusing it with a little extra emotion okay sorry about that i am (laughs) i didn't want to be having a dry mouth here talking today so now instead i probably got overly not dry because everyone hates the word that describes that so anyway um, I'm going to go to my callers because we got a lot today, and I want to get to them as much as I can. So let's go to 202. Hi, 202. How are you? Are you hey, on? Hey, Kelly. It's Kay. Hi, Kay. What can I do for you today? Um, well, first, I just wanted to give you a bit of confirmation. Uh, okay, you awesome. You reading a few few weeks ago. Uh-huh. I wasn't even asking about my sister. Uh Okay. But you, you basically said, told me things were going to pop off. Uh, her and my mm-hmm. mom got into a huge argument on Sunday. Um, oh, it wow. even got a little phys- physical, and my sister has moved oh, my. on. So, wow. Yeah. Not Just to give you a little confirmation a, there. Uh, yeah, thank you. Well, again, I didn't mention it in the whole part about Gemini, but Gemini is siblings. And currently in your chart, Moon, Mom, Mars, conjunct, and uh, let's say you have Venus in your house of uh, family at 28 Aries. So while those are in sextile, um, having your actual sibling, which is the Mercury energy in your chart, has Neptune on it and is in a T-square to all of the energy I just described with Jupiter opposite Mars Moon. So it's kind of like divinely guided <laughs> that they're going to like have this huge fallout and, you know, it doesn't surprise me, but that's really great confirmation. So um, that's another great one-on-one uh, interpersonal illustration of that energy. So what's going yeah. on with you? What can I do for you? <laughs> I know. I'm like, I guess I should ask about me because I'm just trying to get out of that whole mediator role and worry about my life. Um, 
Yeah, I definitely. actually have someone's chart that I want you to look at, a guy that I really okay. was digging. You okay. know me and my <laughs> if you're Iranian. I said man yeah. after man after man in, in and out. Um, let me know when you're ready it's for his. It's funny, but yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Give me, give me, let me see. Do you, does he have a first name? Yeah, you can say N-A-D. Okay, great. Yes. And what's his birthday? Yeah. August 23rd. Okay. What year? 78. Okay. 1978. Okay. And Not sure of the place? time. Not mm-hmm. sure of the time, but in Tallahassee, Florida. Okay, great. Hang on one second. Yeah, it's kind of a shame. I have a, a shorter show, and honestly, I know I've been talking about doing a law. A, what I say, Zoom. I just, I'm not there yet. I'm just not there with um, ready I to think do it's it. Okay. So. I think it's cool that you're accepting a new like format and working with it and getting yeah. condensed and concise and yeah. Great. Yeah, well, yeah, it does go fast, and, um, you know, I do have to manage my time a little bit better and a little more tightly on this, and I can't, I am taking, I know they will uh, record longer than the end of the show for those listen, listen, bah, speak listening yeah, live. Yeah, I think like 10 and or 15 so, minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'll let it go up to 10 minutes longer, so it's really like a 40-minute show when you take advantage of that little part of the system so i'm doing that right but if you if, if you do get cut off you can go in the archives and hear the last minutes that are not live if you're listening live so okay so this Wait. new guy let me see here yeah go ahead oh no i said please. what'd you say <laughs> you go oh I said, oh please. i thought you were trying to say something else okay okay so you want to know how you guys get along or what the future is or whatever <laughs> yeah is that right yes, yes please mm-hmm. okay so his Venus is on your Pluto pretty close, within six degrees in Libra. So um, interesting, he has Mars at 12 Libra and Pluto at 14 Libra and uh, Venus at 15 Libra. You have Pluto at 21 and Moon at 21 Libra. So his part of his life story is that he has major upheavals around relationships, okay? And he mm. goes very deep in them. He wants them. He likes them. Libra's really seek out relationships but pluto is that energy where you're just driven to create that i mean and i say create because it's an autonomous thing yes you can say well i'm a victim of this or that but pluto the energy of pluto is very passionate and very deep and wherever he falls in your chart is where you're you see in your lifetime these major shifts and major changes in dynamics and that means like you you try and try and try and then you can't do it anymore and and the dynamic changes but you're still trying the same way and then you finally hit a brick wall and say i can't do this anymore and then your whole world changes that's the kind of energy that goes smack dab between his drive to have a partnership and his love of being in a partnership so there's this intense energy that always follows him between his desires and his drive around relationships. So the desire would be, oh, I'm attracted to you. It's the feminine nature. It's the receptive nature. And then the Mars is what you're doing about it, how you express yourself. And he expresses himself passionately, but he's predisposed to burn things to the ground on some level, okay? That's the Pluto (laughs) energy. It's the phoenix. It's the phoenix of the zodiac, okay? You have this around your mom because you have a moon-Pluto conjunction. So there is also that similar energy, only for you it's focused on career because it's in your house of career, and it is associated with your mom energy. Ironically, the career house is the father place in the zodiac by tradition, but your moon is very strong there as well, the balance. So, um, yeah. Anyway, he's got Saturn in the same sign as you, Saturn in Virgo, and his Saturn's on your Mars. So he can restrict how you do things, and he may also restrict your movement. So, like, if you just met him where you're at, you're in Nashville, right? Oh, or no, no you were in New Orleans. In New, in right? New or- yeah, I was in New Orleans. New I was Orleans. back in Brooklyn, but I met right. him in New Orleans. Okay. Okay, is he in New Orleans? Yes, but he was in Columbia for four years. He just moved to, back to New Orleans, like, I okay. think in March. And so so for you, what it could do, because it's in his Saturn, your Saturn, your Jupiter, your Mars, is all in your house of travel. Um, 
it means that there's travel with work, and his chart also has that travel with work vibe about it. I mean, it, it, just as it relates to yours. Let me swap them real quick. His, so your Mars, Jupiter, Saturn in Virgo all fall in his first house of a sunrise chart. He has a 29-degree Leo rising by the sunrise because we don't know what time he was born. I just do a sunrise chart. And that puts Saturn in his first house. So he is a workaholic. And even if yeah. it weren't in the first house, he is a workaholic. Like he is driven to be of service and to take action and be responsible and do the work thing. Because work environment, medical environment, service-oriented jobs like hospitality or hospitals, whatever, it's all mm -hmm. the drive of a Virgo. Like teachers, um, they they even in the military, all those things are Virgo-related, but because it's the house of work that naturally is ruled by Virgo, wherever you find Virgo planets, that's where they have this drive to be of service, to do and take action. And that translates in his chart to a workaholic and kind of yours as well. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, that's all I can give you for today because I do want to take my last two calls and the show's already ended. <laughs> it's in recording right now. So um, <laughs> I'm going to wrap it up for today. But if he's, Still, so I mean, there are definite connections in your charts. I will give you that. And so, um, you know, see where it goes. He he likes relationships and he wants a relationship. I can dig deeper, but I can't do it right now. So, if you want to again give me a call privately and do a reading, book a reading, whatever, we can do that or next time. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Good talking to you. Bye. You too. Bye. Thanks. Okay, let's take 646. Hi, 646. How, how are you? you? I'm good. I'm doing how, good. how are you today? Fine. Yeah, so I let's know see. you're Lisa? almost into the show. Huh? Uh-huh. I was just asking yeah, who you are so I can call up your chart. Oh, my name is um, Stacy. Oh, okay. Have you haven't called before? Oh, you haven't called before. Yeah, I yeah, I did talk to you about six months ago, a few months ago. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I don't see Stacy as a, if it's a different phone number, I don't see it. So um, if okay. you want to quick give me your birth information, I can do it before we run out of recording time here. That's okay. Sure. Okay, August 12th, 1989. Okay, okay. and the time and place? Uh, 2.30 New York City. Okay, great. Let's just get that. Is it two? You say two thirty a.m. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. And what can I do for you today? Okay, so I'm trying to see. Oh, this is a great question. So I was in a car accident, and I wanted to see. Okay. If, should I, based off my uh, birth chart, should I settle in 2019 or should I settle in 2020? Oh, good point. Oh my goodness. Um. <laughs> Definitely don't settle now. Uh, <laughs> okay. Let me see. Actually, I would say probably 2020 because what's going to happen is Saturn and Pluto will join up at the end degrees of your house of um, marriage and partnership and go into your house of legalities. And it is the wrapping up energy because you have 27 Capricorn rule your house of legal issues. And so being at 27 degrees, it's really wrapping it up and you want it to be solid and stable and, you know, not no more worries about it. Um, let me just look at a few other aspects. Well, how long ago was the accident? It's about a month now, but I'm in um, current month ago. therapy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, you had Mercury and Aries. Yeah, early Mercury and Aries energy. So that was part of it. And let's see, you have Mercury and Virgo. And it's going to be 27 Venus. Yeah, your your planet of money is at 23 Virgo. Next year, Saturn, I'm, I'm even guessing I can tell you to settle in 2020. And I was looking like, settle in at 27 degrees Saturn, but... I can almost guarantee you you're going to be settling with Saturn joint Pluto middle of January because that's also exactly trying to your natal Venus in Virgo, mm -hmm. which is health issues. And it's Venus is no sign of money. So uh, the planet of money. And so in a trine, a Saturn Pluto trine is like life changing energy. So my guess mm -hmm. is you're going you're, like the natural flow of things will end up in January for you. 
So really? okay. looking at your chart. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, it's, I mean, I it's think it's trouble. Really- mm-hmm. Pardon me? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. What did you say? I, I was just trying to hear what you said. <laughs> oh, I was going to suggest uh, maybe should I just stretch it after January or that's the farthest that I can do it? Well, are you able to call the shots? Yes, I can. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Okay, well, um, because I was going to say, you know, I don't know if the judge is saying, no, this is when we're going to settle. But So they're waiting for you to accept an offer, correct? Yeah. Okay, well, let me look real quick in 2020, because Mercury retrogrades every time this year in water signs, which are highly emotional. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to see which sign the retrogrades are next year. Wow. <laughs> Still Pisces. So the first one in February of 2020 is a retrograde in Pisces. I don't know why we have so much retrograding going on in water. Hang on. Let me look later this year and see Mercury. Because I know they start out in different signs but go back to the water sign. November, Mercury in Scorpio. Um, I'm just trying to see. Your house of money is Cancer. And your legalities house is Capricorn and Aquarius. So... When Mars gets, I, I guess it's if you're looking for choices, Mars getting to late degree Cancer this year. If you want to settle earlier, Mars on your Sun at tw- at 19 Leo. Um, let me see, Mars gets to 19. Yeah, it's, it's Cancer and Leo. So Mars at mm-hmm. 19 is the first of August. So oh. if you're looking to be really fortunate and go for the, you know, like Leo is one of the most fortunate signs for risk taking in the Zodiac and you have sun at 19 last degree of your house of money. Mars will be there. Mm-hmm. Um, it'll be like, okay, take action and take the risk. That's August 1st. And so the last oh, okay. week of July, first week of August, if you want to settle sooner, I would go for that. Otherwise, um, to like wrap it up for good and for true and life changing would be January. Okay. Oh, I, I think I'll t- stick with January. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sounds fun. Well, uh, let me know how it goes. Oh. Sounds interesting. Don't worry. Okay. I'll be calling you back with a tip. I'm saving this archive. <laughs> okay, great. Well, you yeah, take okay. care. Nice talking to you. Okay, bye bye. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. You're welcome. Bye. Okay, that's all the time we have for today. I'm sorry I ran out of time, but I will see you next week. And I am going to do Zoom. I just have to do it when the time is right. And I'm I'm just not quite there yet. Uh, so anyway, we'll see you next week. Take care. Hi, this is Shelly. Thank you for joining us this week. To contact me for a private reading, go to angeliczodiac.com under the readings tab. Background music was provided by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com with additional music by Tracy Coriel at Tracyland.com, T-R-A-C-E-Y-L-A-N-D.com. Music provided on show-by-show basis will be credited within the body of the show. For more info on my art, go to ShellyOverton.com. That's S H E L L E Y O V E R T O N dot com. Merch and other astrological art can be found at astroart.net. To purchase my ebook, Learn Astrology, you can find it at angeliczodiac.com, including discounts. Be sure to check back next week and subscribe through iTunes at Astro Energy Astrology Show. subscribe, please click the picture of Shelly on the right or the red button below.